Let's do teeth. All right, let's do teeth. Let's do teeth. Dental disorder. So we see these a lot in the ER, right? Mm -hmm. We see lots of things. People come in with dental pain, and we know about tooth-caused dental pain. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through all of these kind of in detail. But remember, it's not just teeth that can cause teeth pain. So we'll, and we'll go through all the things that cause teeth pain. But remember, things like trigeminal neuralgia can cause teeth pain. TMJ can cause teeth pain. Your sinus can basically cause referred pain to your teeth. Cancers may do it. Leukemia actually causes teeth pain. That's actually more more gum pain yeah. often. That that, that leukemia can cause that and dental, dental fractures. We all, we're gonna go through all of these. Just remember to keep a little bit of an outside the box thought mm -hmm. when it comes to teeth pain. And then the emergencies that come for us, so actually these are the emergencies that dentists definitely care about. That people may come to us with pain a lot of the time with mm -hmm. this, but we may not do anything other than local care and referral. But we do have certain things like tooth fractures we need to know what to do with. We need, do need to know what, know what to do with avulsed teeth and how to take care of those. And we'll go through all of this so that you have some detail on this. So let's start with basically dental caries, bad teeth, pulpitis, where you actually have a, an erosion through the tooth that has now gotten down to the tooth pulp. Um, this reversible, so your dental, you have a, basically a, a cavity that gets down and it inflames the pulp down below. This is pain that's intermittent. Somebody will say, I don't know, I, bought, I bit the, the piece of candy, it I, went through the ceiling, my tooth really hurt, and then it went away. Um, but I also like chewed on a piece of ice, and yeah, man, it cold. just, wow, mm -hmm. went, went through the ceiling, it goes away. Eventually, when it's worse, the pain is continuous and dull, and it, it, even hot temperature gets it. So I drank a cup of coffee, I can't drink coffee anymore, my tooth hurts too much, it's always aching. This is basically the pulp of the tooth getting more and more inflamed over time because it has an erosion down, and usually infection that goes down into that. Basically, our job really is to make sure there's no abs going on here and get that person referred to have that tooth dealt with one way or the other. The abscess is what we worry about. Mm -hmm. And periapical, I'll tell you, the way you tell about a periapical abscess is you tap the tooth. Yeah. Um, it's, it's no more magic than tapping the tooth. The, it, um, that it will transmit pain down through the nerve. And if tapping the tooth is like, that is it, I can't stand it, don't get, you're done. You have your diagnosis. You don't even need to do any imaging. Get them referred. Get them sorted of, of, of pain control. And honestly, do a nerve block yeah. for pain control. You don't need to give an Patients opioid. Patients love you. They do. It, yeah. The pain is gone. Just get really good at dental blocks for people and they will feel a whole lot better. Um, periodontal abscesses are, are gum disease, not tooth problems. So mm -hmm. the periapical abscess is a tooth problem. Periodontal is the gum problem around it. And this is people can have, it's super common. People have this all the time. They'll have a lump along their gum. They may taste something that tastes funny in their mouth. They may even have, have um, basically sort of thickening along the, the gum line. And some people need to have that plaque taken off. It's mm -hmm. there, that's what's causing the trouble. Our job with those, honestly, is please feel free to IND. Um, you can get rid of that post pretty easily with an 11 blade in these yeah. folks. Yeah, it's just gone. Mm -hmm. it, the pus comes out, they feel way better. Penicillin or Clinda works right. great here. And if you have any worry that that infection goes deeper than just right there at the gums, go ahead and image. There's no de there is no harm done in doing that, but rather than doing harm by poking around in something you should be poking around in. So periodontal abscesses, this, uh, this person has quite a few. I'd worry about Yikes. other things in this person. This person yeah. has a couple in that picture on the left. But you can see little ga gatherings of pus, air, pus collections that you can actually drain with those. The periapical abscesses, Abscess. These are the x-rays that your dentist is going to be looking mm -hmm. at, but we don't have these, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't do panorex even for this. And we're, I don't even know how to interpret a panorex. I bet our <laughs> radiologists don't either. So just tap that tooth and see if that tooth is tender because that's somebody you're going to go ahead and, and treat them with antibiotics and send them on their way and give them pain control. Great. In contrast to like alveolar osteitis, right? This Different is sort of the story. dry socket that yep. happens. Ooh. Typically after like a wisdom tooth or something is pulled, that clot disappears. Look at that. Look and at you that have pocket. this like open pocket into your bone. Where those roots were. Right. And it just goes Ooh. straight in as a, as a way to get infection. And, you know, this might be patients who are on, uh, females that are on hormone replacement therapy because, you know, that just kind of gets in the way of all of your gum development. And then you can get sort of tooth or gum infections that can go all the way down, traumatic extractions typically we talked about, and really the th third molar, these wisdom teeth that just get stuck and impacted, and those instructions, they can go wrong and this can happen. And the treatment for us is really to anesthetize, control their pain, right? The dental block that we yeah. talked about is really helpful for getting patients some pain control, irrigating it, but you know, trying not to like remove any more clot if there's still some there, like you don't wanna like take that no. out because that's protective. And then you wanna pack it with iodoform and you can you know put in some topical antibiotics on the, the iodoform as well, and you wanna give some antibiotics like clinical 
rancomycin mm -hmm. or penicillin, and you want to refer those to the OMFS because that's going to need to get taken. And they're aware of this. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. send them on down. Yeah, exactly, right. And then this is pericoronitis, right? And this is really where the gum and the periodontal area gets inflamed. It says usually, again, those pesky wisdom teeth that right. are kind of getting in the way and they get impacted and then the gum kind of folds over and there's this pocket that like food builds in and infection decides to kind of take away and you get pain tenderness and everything like you would expect and sometimes it'll be purulent if it's really bad but really it's like irrigate the crap out of that area mm -hmm. get all the food and gunk out and the antibiotics and then they really got to get that that tooth the out the operculum i love that yeah that flat yeah, that fancy operculum <laughs> <laughs> but this is what it looks like on exam right you can see that tooth is trying really hard to erupt but it's impacted it's horizontal that there's not gnarly. enough space i know right oh. I know how painful that oh is oh my gosh right oh. and then and then all that stuff stuff gets, uh, you know, food and is impacted and inflamed and it gets infected. So that's sort of what you're looking at here. It's the pericoronitis. So weird. Why, don't, why isn't our job big enough to handle that? Like, why is this such a common thing? There's yeah. some, uh, some evolutionary issue that yeah. happened here yeah. that, where something's wrong. Yeah, it's weird. Like, how many of us had to get our wisdom? Oh my gosh, out, I did, right? right? I, think I did too. Pretty much everybody. It's, it's paid for a it's whole weird. lot of second homes and things. And like wisdom teeth. Yeah, like, what's, what's the point? What is, yeah. <laughs> Evolution, come on. <laughs> all right, so tooth avulsion and tooth fractures, right? We see this all the time. And the key is that you want to get that tooth replanted quickly, right? If it's a permanent tooth, you really want to make sure that you find a way to preserve it and then replant it and then secure it, right? If it's a baby tooth, bleh, what yeah, are you going to do? Just put it, it's put it under your pillow. Yeah, yeah. What's tooth the going rate right these days? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's like 20 bucks or something. I don't know. I you do, right? I, yeah. I, I, my, my kids are going to get this. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tooth fairies are expensive. Yes, they uh, are. But we digress. So, um, you know, every 1% survival loss per minute is, so again, time sensitive, right? You, if you don't have like the fancy sort of commercial products to put the tooth in, then you can use milk, right? Mm -hmm. Patients, if, you know, if they're savvy enough, will put them in milk and come to you and be like, look, I brought my tooth. And then, you or know. Or just tuck it in your gum. Yeah, that's true, right? The point is that you don't want it to dry out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Just put it in your gum, but don't choke on it or no, swallow don't. it. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> and then exposed dentin will kind of give you a sense, like, oh, I see some yellow. It kind of gives you a sense of how deep it is. Pulp will be sort of red, pinkish, or yeah, maybe even blood. Yeah, they've broken it, right? Right, they've, they've broken, broken the it all the way through right. now at this point. And then really the, the thing is to get them to a dentist early to prevent mm -hmm. infection. And then you want to cover any exposed dentin. So if you have the the avulsed tooth, you can kind of put that back and then you can put some dental cement on it. If you don't, then you're just going to have to cover the area that's exposed so that you don't get stuff going in yeah, there get causing an infection. infection. In there. And the right. other thing is that people will put, who have a tooth that's completely knocked out, you have this ligament on the tooth that looks like grunge. I mean, it mm -hmm. looks like there's just this grungy stuff on the, mm -hmm. where the root part of the tooth and people may want to pick it off. Yeah. Do not. Don't, don't leave it. That is actually how they get things back in there and get it to stick. That ligament is really important yes. for the tooth, for the salvation of the tooth. Yes. So don't, it don't make it all nice and pretty. Yes. Leave it mucky because yes. that mucky stuff is important. Yes. And then see the dentist ASAP, right? And then these are some really helpful pictures. So we always talk about the Ellis classes, right? So class one, you kind of just go in through the top of the enamel. Class two, you're getting a little bit deeper. You're not getting into the dentin. And three, you're kind of gone through the pulp. And you can see, you know, the, the dentin's a little bit yellow. The pulp is a little bit reddish pink. And you can kind of get a sense of how you can communicate the, the depth of the fracture to right. your dentist. And you can actually, so it's one of the, I kept thinking, wow, how do I remember this? You don't have to. Mm -hmm. You look at the tooth and it's like obvious. It's yes. like, oh, it's red. Okay, that's, yes. well, not good. Yes. It's yellowish. No, 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 it's not so bad. Yeah. It's all yeah. white. I'm, yeah. That's okay. Right. And then you want to look for sort of adjacent things that are broken too and they make sure everything else is okay. All right. So changing gears a little bit, let's talk about acute necrotizing Oof. ulcerative gingivitis. Blah. Ugh. Right. This is just, I mean, it can look like herpes gingivitis stomatitis, which we sort of talked about, mm -hmm. this sort of angry inflamed mouth. And then um, typically it's a, it's an anaerobic infection, right? So fusobacteria mm -hmm. or spirochetes can cause this. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's one of those things that can be uh, uh, angry and inflamed, be ulcerative. And it just really is sort of foul oh. smelling. And you right? can smell it in the room. You don't, you it's, say, it's like, yeah. it fills the room. Yeah. Yeah, it's I feel so sorry for these people because it's know. it's nasty smelling. Yeah, and I mean, usually it's patients with poor dental hygiene. They haven't had access to be able to get their teeth taken care of. And if it's really bad, you know, you might want to consider if they're immune compromised, like HIV. And the mm -hmm. treatment is really getting professional debridement, but in that 
meantime, you want to give them chlorhexidine rinses. And so that's going to be really helpful sort of cleaning everything out. Absolutely. You know, you know, in bad cases, you might see systemic symptoms like fever and malaise. And if that's the case, you want to give systemic antibiotics like metronidazole or clindamycin, right? Because this is an anaerobic coverage. And then you may sort of also see gingival hyperplasia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we classically learn about phenytoin causing that. Right. But leukemia can be a cause. Some of these other yeah. Yeah, some of these other medications may also be a causative agent. And so, you know, ANUG, you know, respect. It's kind of gross. Yeah. yeah. It's poor thing. Trigger warning pictures. Yeah. Pictures. All right. Yeah. So you got to see it's really ulcerative. It's necrotic. It can smell terrible. Uh, the bottom picture is interesting where it's, you know, you see this sort of gingival hyperplasia and that could be really indicative of leukemia. So it's something to be thinking of. Exactly.